Hi there, so in this section we're going to look at polynomial and rational inequalities. First page will focus on solving polynomial inequalities. Uh, the second page will focus on solving rational inequalities. Um, as we've talked about before, anytime we've solved an inequality, our final answers have always been written in, um, in, as in interval notation. So um, be sure that you um, kind of revisit that remember, uh, with our brackets and our parentheses and that sort of thing. Just below that here, I have um, our steps to solve a polynomial inequality. You I mean, remember, inequalities are always going to have a greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or less than or equal to symbol. At the very beginning, though, in terms of solving for it, you basically disregard that inequality symbol and replace it with an equals mark. You're setting your polynomial equal to zero, and you're finding your zeros. You're going to plot your zeros on your number line, either using open or closed circles, according to your inequality sign. Um, I'll highlight this for you here. Less than and greater than get open circles. Less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, get closed circles. We've seen that before. And then you're going to need to re um, um, create what I refer to as a sign line um, or, or number line, but basically it's a number line and you're just um, concerned about the signs. And you're going to test values on either side of those zeros into the original inequality to determine if the values are positive or negative. Okay. Then ultimately at the end you're going to refer back to the original inequality and determine if, if it's greater than or greater than or equal to you are choosing the um, there we go. Here it is. Where is it at? Less than or less than or equal to will choose negative intervals. Greater than or greater than or equal to will choose positive intervals. I just wanted to find it here in the notes for you so I could highlight it for you. It just makes sense. Hopefully, you know, if you started out with um, in the beginning as greater than or greater than or equal to, you want to choose the intervals on your sign line that are positive. If you started out in the beginning with your inequality sign as less than or less than or equal to, you want to choose the intervals from your sign line that were negative. All of this will make more sense as we work through a full problem. So let's jump right in here to example one, solving this inequality. Um, okay. Uh, right now my inequality is already greater than or equal to zero, so I can think of this inequality then as, and you know what it might be, let's, let's go ahead and identify. Since this is starting out as greater than or equal to zero, Let's go ahead and tell ourselves, at the very end, are we going to be choosing positive intervals or negative intervals? And so since it's greater than or equal to, hopefully you agree, we're going to be choosing the positive intervals. Maybe that's the best way. Go ahead and just identify that from the beginning so that you um, don't um, get lost at the end as far as, well, what am I supposed to do as my final answer? I'm going to be choosing my positive intervals from my sign line. Okay? All right, so now um, first step says, okay, well, um, we've got it already basically equal to zero. Set it equal to zero now. Ignore that inequality sign. Uh, from here we'll factor. And this will factor for us. The only way to multiply to give you x squared. x times x. Most common way to multiply to give you 15. 5 times 3. I want a negative 2 in the center, so I would have to make 5 negative, 3 positive. You would set both of these now equal to zero. So if we set x minus 5 equal to zero, we're going to get positive 5. If we set x plus 3 equal to 0, we're going to get negative 3. Right? I'm just, I'm just doing this, these steps that we've done so many times over that I think by now you don't need me to show that step, those, the, that work, right? I add 5 to both sides, so x equals 5. Subtract 3 from both sides, so x equals negative 3. That's all that I was doing there, okay? Now, from here, it says construct a sign line. And so this is what I mean. It's basically just like a number line. Put these values on it. So you have negative 3 and positive 5. Then it says to test values on either side of these signs. Oh, and one more thing. I forgot that. We need to um, indicate with open or closed circles. Go ahead and do that now here on your sign line so that that will help your interval notation just fall right out whether you're using brackets or parentheses. So since you started out with greater than or equal to, both of these values get closed circles. Okay, just like we talked about before in a previous lesson. Okay, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, going to get closed circles. I'll write it for you. Greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, get closed circles greater than and less than ugh, sorry get open circles when it comes to your sign line all right so now from here you are testing values on either side of negative three 
and um, so you're testing you're, you're testing a value less than negative three you're testing a value between negative three and five and then you're testing a value greater than five I'm going to show you how to use your calculator because that's the easiest most efficient way to do this okay um, so what would what you would do I'll pull up my calculator my calculator go to y equals and plug in the original inequality and always make sure that the original inequality is you know equal to zero at that point so you've got everything pulled over all on one side so here's my original inequality and we're going to use our table to um, to generate or to, to we're going to we're going to use our table feature in our calculator to test values so in order to use your table feature you want to set your table up properly so hit second window arrow down to independent and right now it's on auto use your right arrow key and hit enter on ask okay you want your calculator in ask mode now you're going to hit second graph you should have an empty table now if you if you have a table that has values in it you can just hit delete and it'll get rid of them so we'll go back to our notes here we need to choose a number any number less than negative three so I would just choose negative four for example so I just type in negative four hit enter I get a positive nine I don't really care that it's a nine I just care the fact that that's a positive value so I go back to my um, my sign line here and I say okay when I plugged in a negative value over here when I plugged in negative four I got a positive nine I got a positive value again I don't care about the nine I just care about whether the sign on it is positive or negative go back to my calculator or uh, notice here now I need to choose a number between negative three and five I would just choose zero but you can choose any number between negative three and five so go back here and just type in zero hit enter oh this time I'm getting a negative value so go back to my sign line I put a negative now I need to choose a number greater than five I'm just going to choose six but you could choose any number greater than five you could choose a hundred if you wanted to I'll choose six hit enter get another positive value so come back here this is my positive now at this point we knew at the very beginning that we are choosing our positive intervals so we come up here and everywhere we see a positive that's part of our answer so our final answer here will be just to choose the positive intervals from this sign line which equates to negative infinity to negative three infinities remember always get parentheses because that three shaded in it gets a bracket united with the other positive portion five to infinity and again that five gets a bracket and that's your final answer okay so hopefully the calculator really um, simplifies the math in this in these in these problems okay all right let's scoot on down then to example two in example two um, I need to first get this all less than or equal to zero so since the x cubed is already over here by itself and it's the highest term I'm gonna keep this over here and it's positive I'm gonna bring the 9x and the 18 over so I'm going to subtract 9x and add 18 subtract 9x and add 18 that way I'm sitting at x cubed minus 2x squared minus 9x plus 18 is less than or equal to 0 all right let's go ahead and identify a few things since this is less than or equal to that means this time at the very end we are going to be choosing the positive or negative intervals it just makes sense it's intuitive so since it's less than you're going to be choosing the negative intervals not my writing choose the negative intervals and since it's less than or equal to be sure you use what kind of circles open or closed hopefully you agree closed okay so closed circles just kind of maybe go ahead and identify those at the very beginning there okay now from here the previous problem was an easy factor um, and this is not a hard factor either but it's a different kind of factoring it's factoring by grouping you've got four terms here so we grouped the first two terms together and we grouped the last two terms so out of those first two terms what do they have in common and x squared right what you have left over x minus 2 out of that second set of parentheses what do um, the negative 9x and the 18 have in common hopefully you agree they have a negative 9 in common x minus 2 remember if you recall with factoring by grouping you always need the parentheses part to match up so now you think of okay here's a term and here's a term what do those two terms now have in common they have an x minus 2 in common and then write what you have left over x squared minus 9 which happens to be the pieces on the outside 
Now hopefully you recognize here this x squared minus 9, that can be factored further. x plus 3, x minus 3, that's a difference of squares. Take all of these terms now, set them equal to 0, and solve for x, and hopefully you're tracking with me that, okay, if I set this first term equal to 0, solve for x, I'm going to get 2. Next term, negative 3. Next term, positive 3. So now when I go to my sign line, I need to put these values on it. So I have negative 3, positive 2, and positive 3. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go back and forth with the calculator this time. Okay. What I recommend you do is pause the video, put the function. Ugh, the function got ugly over here. So I'm going to write the function for you again. x cubed minus 2x squared minus 9x plus 18. Put that into y equals. Go back to your table and test values. So you want to test something smaller than negative 3. On the solution key, I tested, and so it's put in something smaller than negative 3. Put in something between negative 3 and 2. Put in something between 2 and 3, and put in something bigger than 3 into that into your table. And again, if I go back to my table, if you ever want to delete things that are already there, you just hit delete, and they go away. Okay, so when you start getting too much in there, just go through and hit delete, okay? Pause the video, put that in Y equals, test your values, um, and then come back to the video and I will talk you through. Um, so in the calculator, I put in negative 4, that's less than negative 3, and I got a negative value. Between negative 3 and 2, I chose 0 and I got a positive value. Between 2 and 3, I chose 2.5, and I got a negative value. And then bigger than 3, I just chose 4, and I got a positive value. Um, you might be noticing a pattern here where they're always alternating positives and negatives. That does not always happen. So um, it, it, it's just, you know, it's happening in these previous two problems that we've looked at. But if you ever had a polynomial that had a bounce on the x-axis, then you are not going to have... Um, the signs are not going to alternate. You could have positive on both sides of them. Okay, so just, just so you're aware of that. And I, I forgot it again to note that these should have all been closed circles on my number line. And now we're ready for our interval notation. We knew that we were choosing the negative intervals, so I want to go up here and choose anywhere I see a negative. And so that happens in this case from negative infinity to negative 3 and then again from 2 to 3. And that's my final answer. Okay, hopefully these aren't too um, bad. All right, so um, lastly here in example 3 with our polynomial inequalities, I need to again get everything all on one side um, less than 0, so I will in this case subtract 10 and subtract 11x. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other. We'll write it in descending order, so I have 2x cubed plus x squared minus 11x minus 10, and now it's less than 0. So everything else canceled out over here. It's less than 0. All right, let's do what we were doing before. This less than symbol means that we are going to be choosing the positive or the negative. Choosing the negative, and because it's just strictly less than, we're going to have open or closed circles on our sign line. Hopefully you agree with open. Okay. Now, if you notice in that previous problem, um, we were able to. This is a four. This is another four-term polynomial. In the previous one, we were able to factor by grouping. In this problem, though, we're not going to be able to factor by grouping. And and I'll I'll go ahead and briefly show that just so that you can kind of see. If I group the first two terms together, I can pull out an x squared, and then that would leave me with two x plus one. Out of this second parenthesis, the only thing I could really pull out would be a negative one, and that would leave me with eleven x minus ten. The only way factoring by grouping works is when these parentheses are the exact same. They're definitely not the same here, so factoring by grouping will not work. So what another option that you have is that you could go to your calculator and graph this function and find as many zeros as possible, and then, and then we could use our synthetic division, okay? This problem actually has three perfect zeros, but I'm going to approach it as if we only had a couple so that you can um, see how it would work if you didn't, if you only had one, for example, um, perfect zero in your calculator. So I'm going to go back to my calculator, go to y equals, and I'm just going to clear that one 
and I've already typed in the function here and I'm going to hit enter on that equals mark so I turn it on and I'm going to hit graph so you can see that it's crossing the x-axis at one two three spots these are three zeros here so what we would do then is we would go to um, our second trace choose number two for the zero and go through the process of finding those zeros so you can see my cursors down here at the bottom I'm just going to use my left arrow key if I'm trying to find this first zero over here on the left then my left bound is going to be below the x-axis so I hit enter right bound then in relationship to that zero is above the x-axis and then the guess you should have a zero at negative two crossing the x-axis at negative two let's do one more so I go second trace number two for the zero um, this time in relationship to this zero left bound is above the x-axis so I'm going to hit enter right bound will be below the x-axis and then the guess I always try to get as close to the x-axis as I can I've got another zero at negative one okay so I'm just gonna stop there we got a couple of good zeros here so now if I go back to our notes here then I know that if I've got my calculator showing me that I have zeros at negative 2 and negative 1 then I should be able to get this polynomial reduced a lot further down right using synthetic division so let's illustrate that so if I put in the 0 out here in the box so that would be negative 2 we'll use that one first if I use a negative 2 and I will have 2 1 negative 11 negative 10 bring down the first term negative 2 times positive 2 be negative 4 1 minus 4 negative 3 negative 2 times negative 3 would be positive 6 negative 11 plus 6 negative 5 negative 2 times negative 5 positive 10 if these were zeros we better get be getting remainders of zeros and sure enough we are so now we know that this is now x squared x number technically we could go from here and we could factor but why don't we just go one step further and make this even easier for ourselves we know another perfect zero is negative 1 and line up my reduced coefficients 2 negative 3 negative 5 bring down that 2 negative 1 times 2 negative 2 add you get negative 5 multiply get positive 5 remainder of 0 so now we've got zeros at negative 2 and negative 1 the last 0 here is this is X and here's your number so this is 2x minus 5 so if we set 2x minus 5 equal to 0 and solve for x, we're going to add 5 to both sides. So 2x equals positive 5, divide by 2, so x equals 5 halves. Now if I go to my sign line, then I have negative 2, negative 1, and then 5 halves. 5 halves is the same as 2.5, right, you put that in your calculator, so here's your five halves and if that helps you write it as a decimal 2.5 by all means um, let's not forget this time this was open circles for all of these okay and now we choose we choose a number less than negative two we choose a number between these two we choose a number between these two then we choose a number greater than 2.5 okay stop the video put this function in your y equals do your test values okay and then I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, when I plugged in negative 3, I got a negative value. I plugged in negative 1.5, I got a positive value. I plugged in 0 and got a negative. And I plugged in 3 and got a positive. We knew we wanted to choose the negative portions. So negative infinity to negative 2. And then negative 1 to 5 halves. Final answer. Okay? So those are your um, polynomial inequalities, and so hopefully those are um, not too terribly taxing for you. Let's move on over then to the next page, the rational inequalities. It's, it's the same sort of approach, but these are a little, a little bit more challenging, okay? Um, you want to be sure when you're doing a rational inequality that you get all of your terms all on one side less than or greater than zero less than or equal to greater than or equal to zero everything needs to be all on one side needs to have um, greater than or equal to zero um, identify all the values that make your inequality undefined and you just find that by setting the denominator equal to zero and solve 
these values will always be represented um, with open circles on your sign line. Okay. Then you're going to take your full function, set equal to zero, and solve. You'll let your inequality sign determine whether you use open or closed circles on those zeros. Okay. You'll use your calculator to do your sign test, just like we did before. And then you're going to be picking the correct intervals according to the beginning inequality sign. So it's the same way. If it's greater than or greater than or equal to, we're choosing the positive. Less than, less than or equal to, we're choosing the negative. Okay. So let's move here, move on down then to example four below. And you'll notice straight away here in example four that is not um, equal to zero yet. So the first thing I need to do is to pull that three over. So I would be subtracting three from both sides. So what that looks like now then is x plus one over x minus two minus three is greater than or equal to zero. Now from here, I need to get a common denominator. I need all of this. I need it to be one full rational um, expression before I start going any further. So I need to get a common denominator. So remember this is a 1 underneath here. So the common denominator then would just be this x minus 2. So from here to here the denominator didn't change so you still have x plus 1. From here you tagged from 1 to x minus 2 you tagged on an x minus 2 so whatever you put in the denominator you got to put up top. Got to keep cleaning up so now I have x plus 1 and then up top I'm taking a negative 3 and distributing it through so I have minus 3x plus 6 and because it's all the denominators are the same I could put all of this over x minus 2 and then do one more clean up here x minus 3x will be negative 2x plus 7 over x minus 2 and now that is greater than or equal to zero. So now at this point your next step is you need to figure out where are you undefined. You're undefined where the denominator equals zero. So I'm going to write this that we are undefined where x minus 2 equals zero. Because x minus 2 down there cannot equal zero. So we solve for x. We add 2 to both sides. So we find out x cannot equal a positive 2. So now, as, as the directions up there told you, when you go to your sign line, you've got a zero here at two. It's an open circle because that's where you are undefined. You cannot equal that value. Okay? It's not really it's not a zero, it's just a place where you're undefined. Um, now to find your zeros, you take and set your function. Take and set our function here, equal to zero. So I set negative two x plus seven over x minus 2 equal to 0 and solve for x. I'm going to put a 1 underneath that 0 and you've seen me do this before. I'm going to cross multiply. 1 times the negative 2x minus 7 still gives me negative 2x plus 7. x minus 2 times 0 gives me 0. Solve for x, so I subtract 7. Negative 2x equals negative 7 divide by negative 2 a negative over a negative gives me a positive 7 halves, which is a decimal would be 3.5. So I'm going to come over here so then we know then that 7 halves is over here. Because this was um, probably better to look at it in this form right here, because this was greater than or equal to, then this 7 halves gets a closed circle. Remember, it says up here in our directions, any values that are where your denominator equals zero, those are always open circles. Okay, so that's why our two is an open circle, but the zeros actually get um, the, what, whatever the inequality sign indicates. So if the inequality sign is equal to, then when you get a closed circle, if the inequality sign is just greater than or less than, you get an open circle. Okay, now you are testing into this function that I have boxed in. So in your calculator you would be put, putting in this negative 2x plus 7 in parentheses divided by the bottom in parentheses. You have to put top and bottom in parentheses and then you're testing a value less than 2 between and to the right of 7 halves. So again pause the video. I think it's, I think it's helpful for you to try and go through these steps. Um, we should find here that you have negative, positive, negative, 
and because this was greater than or equal to, we are choosing the positive. So we are here just two to seven halves, open, I'm sorry, parentheses, bracket. That's our final answer. Okay. A little line here to keep us separate. All right. All right, let's move on over to example five. In example five, again, it's already not equal to zero. So the first thing I need to do then is to take this full left hand side and right hand side and pull it over to the left. So that would look like this that I have x minus four over x plus three minus x plus two over x minus one less than or equal to zero. I've got to get a common denominator. So to get my common denominator would just be to multiply these two pieces together. So here's my common denominator. I would have x plus 3 times x minus 1. x plus 3 times x minus 1. I'm going to go ahead and put what the original numerators had. And now ask yourself, from the old denominator to the new denominator, what did you add on? And if you added it on, you add that to the top. So up here, from old to new, I added on the x minus 1. Next term, from old to new, I added on the x plus 3 to the denominator. Okay, And this is now um, still less than or equal to 0. All right, let's... Now we've just got to, we don't need to foil the bottom, but we need to foil the tops and get it all cleaned up. So if you foil the top up here, I have x squared minus x minus 4x plus 4. Second parenthesis, um, or second foiling here, x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 6. Denominator, I'm not going to foil that out, plus 3 minus 1. All right, so now I'm going to take this minus sign. Well, actually, before I do that, let's, um, let's, let's clean up these parentheses. So I have now x squared minus 5x plus 4 minus over here x squared plus 5x plus 6. All right, so we, we've talked about this before. You've got a negative in front of that back parentheses. Oh, let me finish writing that. Sorry. We can't neglect that denominator there. x plus 3 over x minus 1. All right, so now go back to, we've got a negative in front of this back parenthesis. This means that I have a negative 1 to distribute through here. So that's going to turn us into the top is going to, first parenthesis will stay the same. And then it'll change all the signs back here, right? So minus x squared, minus 5x, minus 6, because you're saying negative 1 times everything. Still have the same denominator, plus 3 and minus 1. All right, so now if we keep going here, we'll look at, and this kind of works out a little bit nicely here. So now notice what happens to the x squareds. They cancel out. You're left then with negative 10x. I don't know where 16 came from. Negative 10x minus 2 over x plus 3 times x minus 1. And this is now still, we might have lost it from back up here, but let me come back up and show you. It's less than or equal to 0. Oh, goodness. Less than or equal to 0. Okay. So, remember this is telling us that we are going to be choosing the negatives. So let's just kind of give ourselves some room here. Actually, let me maybe come over a little bit. Just to... All right. First, next thing we need to do is figure out where this function is undefined. It's undefined where the denominator equals zero. So this function is going to be undefined where x plus three equals zero and where x minus one equals zero. So we mean, mean then that x cannot equal negative 3, x cannot equal positive 1. We solve those little equations. All right, let's go ahead and do our sign line here. So at positive 1 and negative 3, since these are places where you're undefined, undefines always get open circles. Now we need to take our function up here. 
set it equal to 0 and solve for x. So I have negative 10x minus 2 over this denominator. This, this won't be as bad as it looks at the moment. Um, cross multiply, so 1 times the negative 10x minus 2, I have the negative 10x minus 2. This bottom piece down here, all that, all, both of those factors times 0, just give us 0. So now if I solve, I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So I have negative 10x equals 2, divide by negative 10. So x equals a negative one-fifth. So here's my negative, actually it's, now yeah, that's fine, negative one-fifth. Since my inequality sign was a less than or equal to up here, the negative one-fifth being a zero gets a closed circle. Negative one-fifth is a negative point two zero, just, you know, for um, purposes of um, whenever you go to your calculator and start doing your tests, you're choosing something um, so you know where actually what negative one-fifth is, for example. All right, so now you're ready to go to your calculator. You would put in your calculator um, this function here. Box it in for you. That's what you're putting in. Okay. And you should find, I, I plugged in a negative four and got a positive. I plugged in negative one here and got a negative. I plugged in zero and got a positive and plugged in positive 2 and got a negative. We said we wanted to choose the negatives, so that equates to negative 3 to negative 1 fifth, and then 1 to infinity. And that would be our final answer here. These are a little bit more involved. There's, there's more to keep up with in terms of um, your open and closed circles and where you're undefined and your zeros, but um, hopefully you're tracking with me. All right, let's, um, we'll finish it up here with example six. Luckily for that, nicely about this one, it's already less than or equal to zero. So we, can, we will automatically then recognize that since it's less than or equal to, we are choosing the negatives again going to be choosing the negatives, and when we get our zeros, our zeros will have closed circles, right, since it's equal to. So maybe that those couple of things just squaring away from the top help. All right, so um, first thing we then do is we don't have any factoring to do, so we set the denominator, because we want to figure out where it's undefined. Let's write that. Where it's undefined is where x plus 6 cannot equal 0. So we pull that 6 over, so we find out x cannot equal negative 6. So if I go ahead over here and generate a sign line, here's negative 6. It's where I'm undefined, so it automatically gets an open circle. Now I take my full function here, x squared over x plus 6, set it equal to 0, and solve for x. So we cross multiply, 1 times x squared, x squared, x plus 6 times 0, so 0. Take the square root of both sides, so x equals 0. So the other value I have here is 0, and we already established that it gets a closed circle. Now, when you go to your calculator, you would be putting in x squared over x plus 6. I chose negative 7 and got a negative value. I chose negative 1 and got a positive value. And I chose positive 1 and also got a positive value. So you can see here, this is, I've, I've, I've been alluding to the fact that not every single one will always um, um, oscillate between positives and negatives, and so here you finally got to see an example um, that um, does, does not, okay, so it's important that you check all your intervals. And so lastly here, since I'm choosing my negative intervals, I only have one negative interval, and so that would be from negative infinity to negative 6, parentheses on both, final answer, okay? Oh, oh, you know what? I, I wasn't even, I got, we got to, I got to add one more thing to that. I forgot about that. So because our problem said less than or equal to zero, we're choosing the negative, uh, um, but we also have to be careful since it said less than or equal to zero, the, the negative indicates where we're less than or equal to zero, but notice here how at, at zero itself, you've got a closed circle, so you actually, equal zero at zero, so you get to include zero in your 
solution as well because it says you need to choose less than or equal to so we choose the negative but we can also choose any value where you're equal to zero we're equal to zero there as well okay all right let me know if you need anything thanks a lot bye